Um, so this is the uh, November 2024 Founders Q&A, talking about the game and some stuff. Uh, so let's take a peek at this. If you didn't know what this was, this is an upcoming game from Archetype Entertainment, who is founded by, uh, it's backed by Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast. And this is a bunch of the old Mass Effect people. I don't think the Awakened count is small, but I really do love the Awakened. But I'm a really big fan of the Silicate Stamens. I think they're really cool. I like Lifestone. It's super cool. Like, if you've read the book, you're familiar with it. It's a little bit different in the game, but we still do some cool things with it and are uh, going to give the player a lot of opportunity to leverage that as a tool in their player kit to uh, help their progression and their journey. That's important to note. So, um, one of the things they've done is they just released a novel set in the same universe. So, if you're someone who appreciates lore, this is a lore heavy game. Um, they do talk a little bit about the book in this video, and the book is essentially set in the same universe, but it's taking place in a different part of the world than the game is taking part in. So they kind of get like two different takes on what's happening within the universe. And if you missed the presentation, this was announced at the Game Awards this past December. Um, and essentially it's a time travel, time dilation, RPG, science science fiction RPG, by a lot of the people who worked on Mass Effect and other games. Matthew McConaughey plays a big part in it. He was the person who uh, announced the game on stage. And the joke was, you know, I've had some experience with time dilation in the past because of the Inception game. And he plays a big part in this game. If you have not been following their YouTube channel, they've been dropping snippets um, of lore and little videos on different characters and races and beings and creatures in the world and Matthew McConaughey is narrating those videos as a character called CC Felton and they're going to talk about that character a little bit later in this video but just to give you a little bit of a background for those of you who might not know what this game is all about it's a science fiction RPG that deals with time dilation um, I did a reaction video last week or maybe the week before they have a story trailer out which talks about kind of what this game is going to be about so i would say go watch that if you haven't already taken a peek took a peek taken a peek peek that all your missions are going to include choices uh that have impact but not all of them are going to be directly due to time dilation there's a big story in exodus and you're going to be making choices throughout the entire game of course maybe one of the coolest aspects of it is that some of your did i say cc felton i meant cc or live cc like felton is a community member when you have to decide which <laughs> campaign <laughs> my bad oh. Thank you, Transcend. Can I share this? <laughs> no. No? Okay, uh... well, there's going to be some cool choices that uh, have cascading effect in the game. And the ones where time dilation is in play, yeah, those are the most significant in the game and likely to have the largest ramifications in your story. All the choices you make are going to affect your progression as a character and how you develop as the traveler. That's the hilarious The choices are also going to have an impact on your home world and the we do have you a care about. Community the wrong member, choice can change your relationship Felton. in ways you may not anticipate. And my brain went to that maybe person. Maybe that was the right choice for you. Ultimately, it's your game, and we want to give you those choices to do those things. So essentially, they're just confirming that you're going to have lots of choices. I don't pay attention to developers too much when they talk about, like, choices are going to matter. Choices are impactful, because every video game I have ever played since the dawn of my existence has had choices that impact the storyline in some way, shape, or form. The problem is when people hype it up in their minds that, oh... This, this game is going to be one of the games that's going to have the most impactful decisions of all time. And eh, it's just every game has this. Every game talks about it. It's not a big deal. It just means that there's going to be variation in gameplay based on the decisions you make. And you can have multiple playthroughs where you get different outcomes or different conversations, different whatever based on those conversations. It's nothing to get all excited about. How does the story of the game relate to the one in the book? Yeah, so um, the book just came out. The star system where the video game takes place is pretty close to um, the Crown Celestial Worlds of Peter Hamilton's novel. It's not in the Crown Dominion, and the humans there aren't dominated by the Crown Dominion Celestials. In fact, the human world is ruled over by humans. It's um, so that immediately makes it very different because it gives it different themes. Because you know you don't have that ever-present, all-powerful celestial civilization over top of you. 
I like the fact that our universe allows for you to explore different themes and different kinds of stories and everything else. It's like uh, Peter was able to tell his story and we were able to tell our story, but we also share a lot of stuff. The Crown Dominion Celestials are the main Celestials you're going to interact with in the video game. A lot of the Changelings and Awakens that you see in Peter's book show up. And in fact, the main character of the book, Finn, also shares some stuff with the main character in the video game. Uh, which is a cool way to do it. Um, one of the things that I think... I wish more games did this. I wish more games had tie-in novels. I think that's a really cool way to do things. Defiance was one of the most interesting projects I've ever paid attention to because I loved the science fiction show. The game was cool and everything else, but I, I really enjoyed the sci-fi channel show that they did around that world and that universe and then having that tie into the video game. I thought that was a cool concept. Not every game has novels and tie-ins. Some do, some do comic books. More and more, it's becoming more frequent to see big franchises, whether it's uh, Cyberpunk 2077 or um, with their uh, Edge Runners or The Witcher show with The Witcher video games and books or things like Arcane tying into the League of Legends world. More and more we're starting to see, you know, bigger companies spending the money to have overarching media that ties into whatever the main product is whether it's a video game or a book series or something and i'm really happy to see more creative people doing creative things um when are we getting the first gameplay trailer is what's asked um thanks for your excitement i knew we'd hear this question we actually hear this a lot from our marketing team that we need to be showing gameplay soon and we know you want to see what more of what's going on there we're eager to share it team has been working heads down for a while. Um, things are coming together really nicely with the game. It's fun, and I can say that coming not just from me, but from of our external testing partners. They've been playing the game and telling us how much fun they're having with it. Unfortunately, I don't have a specific date yet for our next gameplay reveal, but a date does exist, so stay tuned. The level of personality that a character <coughs> might have in a role-playing game is really dependent upon the kind of role-playing game and it kind of goes on a scale on one end you have like massive multiplayer games or skyrim where you really can imagine yourself or your character your avatar as almost anything you a want a few years on the other side of the spectrum, you have like final fantasy or they've been working on a few years. games where your character's name and gender and everything is decided for you in personality so at um bioware we had uh two kind of different types of franchises one was the Dragon Age one was the Mass Effect, and um, Dragon Age we allowed more character customizability. It was more important because Dragon Age was kind of like a spiritual successor to the Baldur's Gate franchise, and that was important. Mass Effect was more um, authorial in how the personality was developed, as in you know the developers gave Shepard more of a personality. With our game, we are leaning more towards the Bioware science fiction game. Uh, you're still going to be able to obviously make choices with a lot of cinematics and where you're fully voiced. We want to have lots of drama. Um, that's hard to do if you don't have a personality. <laughs> Anyways. So essentially what they're telling you right there is that it's going to be a shepherd like story. You're going to have an end. You're going to have a character that you play, which already has a defined personality. You will be making choices along that character's journey, but that character's personality is already predefined. So, the same people who cried about how Dragon Age Vilgard didn't allow them to be evil are going to cry about this game because they're not going to be allowed to make evil choices because you're going to be on a predefined path with a personality that you've already that's already been defined by the developers because you're on a story arc that they define. You will be able to make choices along that way, but you're going to be going on an arc that they have already determined for you. Um, so I can already hear the people out there in the background. It's not going to be a true RPG then. Bah! Um. Due to time dilation, will weapons and equipment be obsolete by the time you return? Yeah, in Exodus, your weapons don't become obsolete as you journey through the game, but you do progress. Uh, I don't know that you're going to be able to choose gender transcend because the character of June is a male, as I understand it. Because um, if you've seen the previous uh, cinematics, there are two characters in the cinematic. Now, I could be mistaken on that. I could be mistaken. Um they might be allowing you to because if you watch the gameplay trailer um the literal gameplay trailer the story trailer says 
that the female that you see in all the storylines, she was the one lost to time. And I believe you're playing the male character who is rescuing her from time or doing something. I believe you're going to be the male protagonist. I don't think that that's going to be... I don't know that you're going to be able to choose gender in this one. I can't confirm that, but I would say based on my understanding of what they've shown so far of the lore is that you're going to be a male protagonist. The female um, is part of the story, but she gets separated because of the time dilation. And like the story trailer that they showed off, which we reacted to a couple weeks ago, she's being like immortal, immortal, memorialized. Is that the word? Like in a museum. Um, and then the male character shows up and everyone's like, whoa, where did you come from? You know, because he's time dilating. And yeah, and then he's like, yeah, it makes more sense if you've watched the story trailer. With them along the timeline that you follow. And time is a factor in everything that you do with your weapons as well. You'll see years and decades go by, uh, on the, especially on the Exodus missions that you journey out on. Uh, and technology plays a factor there, obviously, um, and it evolves with you over time. On these journeys, you're seeking out remnants right that are critical to your pursuit in saving humanity. Uh, but you also have the choice when you get back home to decide how you want to use those remnants and harvest them. And we think that's a really cool thing because some of them are going to affect different parts of your player experience, but also your civilization in the game. Um, but they can be used to help make your technology personally better too in a cool way that we think uh, players will be excited about. Because you're a traveler going and getting incredibly powerful artifacts that are far beyond your civilization all the time, those aren't going to go out of style because they're just so much better than anything that your world is going to have. It's going to take hundreds of years, maybe thousands, for your world to catch up to some of those civilizations. C.C. Orlev. This is the character that Matthew McConaughey is There's playing. There's a little-known actor who's playing C.C. Orlev. His name's Matthew McConaughey. And um, he's obviously going to be a major character in the video game. We're not really revealing anything at this moment, but in the Mariyama video, at the very end, he makes that strange sign-off, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and that's a clue. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, we're making a third-person action adventure game. Third-person confirmed. Is it still your favorite perspective, James? Mine is real-time strategy, but that genre is dead. Just Aww. kidding, it's not totally dead, but it's kind of like, <laughs> it's not as big as it used to be. Well, with third person, we hope that's what you all wanted to hear. Yes. Um, <laughs> we're listening to your comments and your questions, so keep sharing them with us uh, on the Archetype Entertainment social channels. Uh, we don't say this enough, but we appreciate all your comments, all the things that you send to us. Thank you for your support and your feedback. That's weird. The video froze. I don't know what's up with that. Uh, we plan to share more in December, so stay tuned. If I had to guess, because they did the announcement of the game, like the official announcement about the game uh, was the Game Awards show last year, last December. Matthew McConaughey came on stage and they announced this game. Um, um, maybe it was announced before that, now that I'm thinking back, because I feel like I've been signed up to their newsletter for a lot, lot longer than that. Anyway... Um, they did their big reveal of the trailer and everything in December. I think that's what it was. Um, so it sounds like they're probably going to be doing something at the Game Awards show again this year. Um, so again, there's a novel out around this. Um, I know some of you in chat have not have not seen anything about this game. So let's go really quick, just, just so that you can have a little more awareness of this. Let's go over to their... Um, uh, let's go watch the game trailer... Extended story trailer. Let's watch this together. This is the extended story trailer, which we have watched before. But for those of you who haven't seen this yet, this will give you a little more insight into what this game is going to be about. She was not only brilliant, but courageous. This is why I think you're playing to a male, planet, because they're talking about how she, she is immortalized. To travel to the stars. As a frontier world, we were barely hanging on, desperate. We tried digging up our past to find the key to our future. Max, we need to head back. There's too much interference. Hold on, I'm getting a rebate. I can't... <gasps> What she found that day 
was a miracle. It would be our salvation. And she used that ship to explore the far-flung corners of the galaxy. A traveler on the hunt for celestial treasure. Careful, Max. The data structure is incredibly dense. This is it. So as far as I understand it, you're playing him. I could be wrong, and they might give you a choice which one of those characters you're playing at character creation. But based on this story trailer, to bring back artifacts to put us on the path to scientific breakthroughs. She risked everything, time and again. But despite her bravery, eventually her luck would run out. for us she made it home safely while she was alive she was too humble to speak of her adventures but at least we her descendants can honor her memory thank you all for visiting the museum today and safe travels tomorrow hey hey that's off limits She was always charging headfirst into the darkness. I was always one step behind. This all makes it sound like you're playing his character. The Celestials hunted us down. I knew they'd keep chasing us until they ripped our ship apart. Come on! But they could just be making the trailer from one and point I of view to, to give a coherent storyline and then when you start the game you can choose which travel you're playing that could legitimately be what they're shooting for the femme ship versus male ship scenario so I led them away from this world away from her we both knew the cost of using the gates when you travel at light speed time slows to a crawl it was only days for me, but an entire lifetime passed for her. And in the chaos of those final moments, we never said goodbye. Oh, yeah, without a doubt, there's going to be epic cinematics for sure. This is exactly the type of game that I love to play. Cinematic storytelling. No, 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 no. come with me. God damn, don't make me tear up first thing in the morning, guys. Anyway, guys, that is Exodus, and I'm definitely playing that. Um, I have no idea if this is going to be a 2025 release or a 2026 release. It feels like they're definitely making steady progress. Um, obviously, we're going to get more information in December, so in another month, we should we should know more about this game. I would bet they're going to be doing some sort of an extended gameplay reveal around Christmas time or around the Game Awards show, if I had to guess. I don't know if they're or I don't know if they're far enough along to announce a release date yet. So I don't have this penned in for 2025, but if it does show up in 2025, you can bet your ass I'm going to be playing this game. 
Um, and I have been covering it for the past few months, going through the Founders Q&A and stuff. So as they continue to produce, like this one just dropped yesterday, the, the Founder Q&A that we watched at the beginning. So I'll be continuing to cover this game. So if you are excited about this, just stick around because um, I'll definitely be covering this and playing it as well. Uh, we're going to be continuing the stream right now, but for those of you watching this after the fact, as it's clipped out for YouTube, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Daily streams on YouTube and Twitch, so you get to watch where you prefer, and I usually start in the mornings, um, so just stick around, get up, hang out with coffee, all those good things.